Hi everyone, I wanted to show you a book nook that I made recently. A book nook is like a little miniature that you make to fit into a bookcase. And I wanted to make one that would uh, fit in in between my sketchbooks on my sketchbook shelf. Um, so I made mine a little bit bigger, but obviously what you'd need to do is basically make it the height and depth of the books on your shelf. Um, depending on the size of your bookcase so obviously sizes vary and what you need to do is you need to basically make two walls which are like the size of a book cover one wall at the back which is just a little bit wider than a spine of a book and then you need to make a base and a roof and the front needs to be open so what I did was I cut out the pieces of cardboard I needed to make the basic shape as you saw at the beginning and then that was only held together with masking tape because obviously I needed to take it apart again so I could actually make the design inside. And the design inside is basically how I made the um, background pieces for my haunted village where they're quite flat houses because um, they're designed to just fit into this um, book nook. Um, so first of all, I've been watching a lot of people who've made book nooks based on like Harry Potter and stuff, which I didn't want to do one on Harry Potter, but I like the shape of the um, bay, the bay windows that they make when they make um, the one shop, um, Ollivander's. Um, so I decided to make got all of my buildings in this, by the way, I like my along my haunted village theme so it's like lots of boarded up windows and stuff like that but I like the shape of the um, bay windows of Ollivander's so I decided to use bay windows for this one and I thought well the one on this side can have more detail and then um, the other side can have it's still got detail but not as 3D as this one if you get me so what I did was um, make the bay windows out of some blue roll tubes because let's face it, we've all got plenty of these around um, and just used my uh, craft knife to cut out the areas where the glass would be. And I wasn't aiming at doing, um, you know, like super duper detailed um, windows because I'm going to cover these up with boards anyway because I wanted to make it obviously look like it's all boarded up. And so what I needed to do was just do basic windows. Um, I didn't need to go crazy with the details or anything. But just enough to, um, you know, make it look real enough. So I cut out the windows, as you can see out of the tube and I left the base of the tube on because that forms like the sort of bottom of the bay window and then I stuck strips at the top and bottom and strips either side to finish off the window frame. I found this bit a bit fiddly I could have done with actually sort of incorporating the sides of the frame into the cardboard tube really but for the size of the windows I didn't really have enough space I suppose I could have cut the tube like a bit so it was a bit wider maybe and you'll see that once I get the sides glued into place it starts to look a little bit more like a window it's just a case of going over the two bits that stick out on the window frame and underneath those the top and bottom so it looks like it's all in one and then it's just a case of gluing that into position um, and if you're wondering um, what I'm doing about behind the window and stuff I'll cut that out later on. I've just left the back of the window solid for now, uh, just so that the cardboard's got a bit more, bit more strength while I'm working on it and gluing and stuff. And I did the two bay windows um, exactly the same way, and then added more details like the doors, the door, the windows upstairs, um, a strip of wood going across the front of the building as if it's like a sort of divide between the downstairs and upstairs that sort of thing um, so I added more details that way um, 
and then as you can see, oh, also I added some little stairs as you can see as well and I thought for this first house I would show you more detail of like more of how I made it and how I put it together um, and then you'll see in a bit once I've done the stair like started the stairs and um, started to put together the um, front of the building um, and lock the side of the stairs and everything um, I do switch to showing you one of the other buildings I made because apart from this bit this is pretty much made exactly the same as how I made all my haunted houses for the haunted village um, so I thought well I'll just show you the main bits that's different on this and then show you how I did the bulk of the rest of the buildings for the alleyway now I didn't have a mirror to go at the back like some people use where they put a mirror at the ang at an angle so that required me making a piece to go at the back which I could put at an angle to make it look like the alley goes round the corner um, but it also meant I needed to make the building because what a lot of people do is at the back of these they put a mirror at an angle which reflects the other side of the buildings that they've made for the sides and it saves them having to make the buildings at the back but like I said I didn't have a mirror that I could use for this so I made this piece which is to go at the back and this will be installed at an angle so I can make it look like the alleyway is going around the corner and it just disguises the fact that it's the back of a box basically and I made this how I made a lot of my haunted uh, houses in my haunted village where I put strips down for the boards of the windows and go over it with hot glue to give it that wood texture and the only difference is is I added like a brickwork texture now I know it doesn't look very straight or neat or anything but once this has got paint on it's fine basically what I needed was the pencil to just press into the cardboard to give that rough brick shape um, so you get the rough like sort of mortar lines in the uh, brickwork um, this is just so the texture shows up once it's painted normally I make it so it looks like these are made out of wood so I'd, instead of bricks it would be strips of wood um, but I didn't want to do that for this and to make the windows I just took like a plastic wallet and just scratched it with um, a nail file and that's what I used to make the glass in the windows and then later on I put a layer of paint on the back um, to make the windows look really dirty so as you can see i would put the brick detail on this house as well and I've done some basic window frames around the top windows and here I'm just adding strips of cardboard to make it all look like it's all boarded up now um, I decided it looked too new and it looked a bit weird because I'm normally making stuff that's like all like broken down and dilapidated and haunted and spooky looking um, so I decided to add the boards and it was a bit awkward on the bay windows but it just meant I'd got to curve the cardboard a bit and you'll see I'll focus more on as you're looking at it the left side than the right side because the right side no one's going to see that once it's in the um, uh, book nook um, all you're going to see is anything on the left on this side so I focus most of my details on the left hand side um, so that and obviously if I get too close to the right hand side it can interfere with the second strip that I've made that goes at an angle at the back you'll, you'll see later on how it goes together um, for boarding up the windows I did my usual where it strips of cardboard made to look like planks using hot glue and all I do is I squeeze out a tiny bit of hot glue and then rub it fast forward and backwards across the um, uh, cardboard and it leaves like a little little streaks of glue which make the sort of um, wood texture as you can see I've put the first two bits together because I've just painted them all black at this stage and I've stuck them onto the base obviously this will be all cut down to shape and here I'm just making a basic um, pathway just with some rough brick shaped pieces of card um, I wasn't too bothered about making it look exactly like cobblestones or anything um, I just did like this basic sort of bricky pattern and I made it look like it curves at the top as well because that will add to the illusion that the alleyway goes around the corner at the back 
um, and I just did this with basic bits of cardboard you could round off the corners if you really wanted to and make more cobblestone type shapes but I was like nah this will be fine and then for mortar and to fill in between those um, stones that I made I use my hot glue this makes so it's sort of like a mortar and it fills in the depth like the depth of the areas in between the um, little bits of cardboard it fills it in quite well um, so I use plenty of hot glue for that and that just gives me a basic sort of brick floor type look um, you know as if there's the work there are sort of cobblestones but they're a bit bigger sort of thing obviously did my usual where I paint them all black first of all um, and then I did put a touch of grey over the top, um, just a little bit, um, but then I needed to um, dry off this first layer of paint. So you'll see in a bit, I get the heat gun out and dry it off, and then I can do a bit more dry brushing over the top of that. So here I'm just using my heat gun. It's a, it's not a mega high heat glue glue gun. It's just one that's for like crafting and for card making and stuff that I got from the local art supply shop. And then once I sort of just, because obviously it was quite a warm day when I did this, um, so the paint was drying quite quick anyway because it's acrylic, which is one of the reasons why I like using acrylic paint. And then once that was dry, I dry brushed over the top with grey first of all. Um, and then went over with a bit of white here you can see what the house looks like now that it's covered in the black paint you will see areas where I haven't covered the um, cardboard very well but you can't see that once it's inside the alleyway so I didn't worry too much about it and at this stage I'm just dry brushing over the top with a grey just to make the brick details show up a bit, a bit more to make the wood details show up more um and i went over this a couple of times i did gray and then i did uh white over the top um to make it um st like all those details stand out more and here i'm just using there's like the tiniest tiniest amount of um paint on the uh on the brush here i've got the paint quite dry Basically, when you're dry brushing, you want to do uh, quite thin layers at a time. You don't want to do like big, thick splodges of wet paint. You need it really dry to get that. You need it so it just touches on the um, surface texture of the project and doesn't sink down into all the recesses. Because that's the whole point of painting it black, is to make all those recesses really recede back and look look deeper than they are. Plus I like the um, look of making the house fairly black because it fits in with my haunted village theme, which is what I'm currently using. Because um, this is basically a haunted... The idea is this is a haunted alleyway in the haunted village, if you get me. And once I'd done the, all the door... the building sorry with the dry brushing and as you can see the other side is actually just lying on the table there because obviously it's easier to do this bit when it's still open on one side um what i decided to do was add snow now i've got two lots of snow uh one's this lot polystyrene balls and the other one's the one that looks like flakes um but i decided to use the flakes in the end um so mostly what I did was I lay down like a layer of hot glue and put the flake snow on the top and then just press the uh, flake snow into the hot glue to make it stick. And then to make it thicker, I put, once that had cooled, I'd put another layer of hot glue over the top and some more of the flake. Because um, you can't see the hot glue through the um, flake snow if you put enough of it on. I have seen people have used like um, polyfiller, um, you know joint compound and stuff to make like thick snow but for this i just decided to use this and i'll experiment with other methods of making snow later on so this just meant i would got to do a couple of layers uh, and then i put the snow just in front of where the next building's going to go get my torch off there we go so as you can see there's 
what it looks like and it makes it because i did it at an angle at the back it makes it look like the alley goes around the corner what a lot of people do is where that building is at the back is they put a mirror in but i haven't got a piece of, like a piece of mirror that size and obviously i don't have access to anything like that at the minute because most of the shops are still shut so but yeah so there's a side and i've got like little lights so it makes it look like where the wind the doors are cracked open you can see um glowing from the doors and then it's all lit up and it does glow better in the night and that's it hope you enjoyed this video thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one bye for now